Holland, it's Christy and Brent with Van Holland. We are here entering our destination of Tennessee. Uh, we get to see my sister who we haven't seen in a couple of years, so I'm so excited for that. It's taken us a couple of days or a few days to get out here. Uh, we got to see some friends in Missouri uh, that we hadn't seen in 20 years. That was really cool and fun catching up with them. Uh, we've had tires uh, have nails in them. We've had some electrical problems. We've had storms, crazy rain, thunder, lightning, but we are finally here in Tennessee. So we hope you enjoy some of these videos that we get to share with you. All right, here's one of our adventures we've really been planning on for a while to come out to here to Tennessee. We're down a little bit south, uh, Sweet south water. end, Sweetwater. And uh, we're gonna do something called the Lost Sea Adventure. That building right behind there is gonna take us down to a lake. Yeah, that sounds pretty interesting, huh? Going down to a lake, it's a hundred and some feet underground. And uh, so we'll give you a little tour of what that's like. The Lost Sea, which is listed in the Guinness Book of Records for being the largest underground lake, is located in the Craig's Head Caverns in Tennessee. It begins with a guided tour of the caverns. This includes a three-quarter mile round trip on a wide sloping path. While the temperature is only about 65 degrees, it is very dark and you feel the humidity and the dampness. Throughout the years, there are many uses for these caves. There are markings along the walls that even date back to the Civil War. During this time, the Confederate Army mined the cave for saltpeter, a commodity necessary to the manufacturing of gunpowder. On the ceiling, there are rare crystalline structures called anthodites. These fragile, spiky clusters, commonly known as cave flowers, are found in only a few of the world's caves. The caves are very intricate, and the Lost Sea Adventure does a wonderful job of lighting and really highlighting all the details within these caves. Very beautiful. During the Cold War, it was thought a good place to hunker down in. During this time, they thought they could use the cave system to store food for all the people that could be down there. Today, you still see several boxes and barrels of food left from that time. Mmm, I'm sure it's not very tasty anymore. This was the original entrance to the caves, and for a short time, it was a dance floor and nightclub. But they noticed you don't get drunk down there, or at least you don't notice it until you leave the caves. So it appears these caves were full of all sorts of tomfoolery. Back during Prohibition, distillers were used down here to create moonshine. This was one of the three. One was in this room, one was across the street, and the third one, well, it's disappeared. As you can see, there is a water source that would bring water down here, making it probably pretty handy to do what they were doing. 
As you walk through the caves, there's Devil's Hole. It is believed to have a red glow, but we think it's been enhanced just a little bit. The legend, though, is that you see the face of the devil, you have evil in your heart. Phew, good thing we only saw the red glow. The next section we come to is the mini Grand Canyon. This section looked a lot like the real Grand Canyon, showing the different sedimentary layers. Hence the name mini Grand Canyon. You almost felt as if you were at a Disneyland attraction. The thing is, is it's only about four feet deep, so it's not quite as grand as the Grand Canyon, but it's just as beautiful. Okay, so we've been walking for a little while and we finally come to the lake and it is dark. I mean, it is seriously dark in this room. There are a few lights out on the dock and you're thinking, we're getting in a boat and going out on that water? There is history of this lake. Although there were rumors of a lake deep in the cave, it wasn't actually discovered until 1905 by a 13-year-old boy named Ben Sands who wiggled through a tiny muddy opening 300 feet underground and found himself in a huge room half filled with water. The room was so large that his light was swallowed up by the darkness before reaching the far wall or the ceiling. For the rest of his life, Sands would describe how he threw mud balls as far as he could into the blackness and heard nothing but splashes in every direction. Nowadays, you get to take a boat ride in this lake. As you can tell, the lake is full of fish. Yeah, those are rainbow trout. They stock the lake the idea was to find out if these fish could leave this water, and what they found is that there was another cave. It's full of water, and only scuba divers have been able to explore it. Who knows if they'll ever open that up. It was a great day out on the lake. No worry about getting sunburnt. Once we got off the boat, we got back on the path that takes us out of the cave. Come along with us and see the sights that we saw. Once we were out of the cave, we actually explored the little town across the street. There's a little general store with things to buy, a glassworking shop that was making all sorts of detailed glass sculptures, and a, all the important sweet shop. You gotta have a sweet shop, you gotta have ice cream, you gotta have some snacks, which we did. Um, because we ate, we thought we better go for a hike. So we did their little nature hike and the trail. 
This was a little trip through um, the Appalachian portion of the um, Tennessee. We hope you enjoy our little hike. After a day of adventure seeking, we are all pretty hungry, so we went over to Banjo's Barbecue over in Dayton, Tennessee. Now, none of us had eaten here before, but it had pretty high ratings on Facebook. Before we were even able to order, the owner came out and brought us something called Burnt Ends. Now, we had never had these before, but man, this is like the candy of meat. And then he brought us some smoked chicken wings, which were really good. I ordered the brisket, which I almost didn't need any food now because I was so full, but boy, this brisket was amazing with nine different types of barbecue sauce to pour on it. Wow, what a treat. And let me tell you, this thing called a yingling, um, I'm really digging this beer. I wish they had it here in California. Um, just really is a much slower life here, just a little uh, more relaxed, really enjoying that part of um, Tennessee right now. So uh, we hope you enjoyed the video of the Lost Sea. Um, it was a little dark, so we tried to put a lot of photos in there. We think those were uh, maybe a little bit better representation of what was down there. It's just beautiful. Um, and hope to see you soon. Like remember, and subscribe. And remember, adventure awaits.